moron! <laughs> hey, moron! <laughs> look, look, look at me! I'm the Wooa Water Boy, dude! Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's getting ready to have a great weekend. We had an incredible game last night. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more here in a few minutes. But, um... What that game taught us was everything that the Cowboys are not. Um, you saw Kirk Cousins thriving. Right now he's thriving with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, 509 yards, four TD passes. Um, it was incredible. But even Baker Mayfield with um, a balanced offense, having a great running attack, um, and being and not turning over the football they were in that game and had it not been for a missed face mask call which ended up being that wasn't called and they called holding which was the change in the game it was the difference in the game literally because instead of tampa bay continuing and staying in field goal range being able to kick a field goal it ended up being that they got kicked out of field goal range, the, pl the the drive bogged down, and it left enough time for Kirk Cousins to have a miracle to come back, kick a field goal, and then just have an incredible drive. Here's the thing that we have to understand when it comes to the Cowboys. Jerry Jones is the modern-day snake oil salesman. When he said, you know, going all in, the Dallas Cowboys were never going all in. We hope and cling <clears throat> to what Jerry and Stephen Jones say <coughs> to believe because we want to believe that the Cowboys are emotionally invested in it the same way we are as the fans. And I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case. The investment for them is getting more and more money. You would think, here's what I would think. With a team that is worth half a billion dollars more from last year to this year, when I look and I say, my team is worth two and a half billion dollars more than the next team. What I look at and say, I have a his and hers helicopter and a, 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 a yacht that's as long as a football field. That the reason I am here in this position is because of you guys. You, the fans. And a great way to thank all of us that are out here talking about weed and boys and buying all of these jerseys and spending a boatload of money. And here it is. I'm getting ready to make a trip to Dallas. That's going to probably cost me $1,500 by the time it's all said and done to give more money to the coffers of the Dallas Cowboys. And the reality is, is they're not for Jerry Jones to say, we're all in, we're all in. And then turn around out of his mouth and say, Dak's going to have to do more with less. Those two things are two opposite ends of the spectrum. And Jerry Jones knows that Dak Prescott, having a good quarterback, keeps you in games. Keeps you in position where you're constantly talked about. That's why you pay Dak Prescott. That's why you have him there because... When we look at it from the standpoint of a defense that just gets mollybopped by another team and gives up 48 points, they're not talking about Jerry Jones didn't get the players to go on the field. They talk about the quarterback. Your quarterback right now, third most in yardage on the season with the 32nd ranked running game. You're 2-2, two and two, tied with the Eagles and the 49ers and a bunch of other teams that you know, have an opportunity to maybe make the playoffs. You are 
in the conversation of playoffs and beyond without having to do all the work. And when it doesn't work, when it's shortcomings, people honestly still look, it's just a quarterback. I'm sitting here reading tweets this morning and stuff where people are, you know, where where the article is about <clears throat> the Cowboys are out on Devontae Adams. Okay? They're out on Devontae Adams. Too expensive. Too expensive. This is after Jerry Jones saying that Derrick Henry, too expensive. And Stephen Jones talking about we believe in our own guys. Believing in your own guys is what we've been doing for 30 years. And we continue to do the same thing. We were never all in. And what Jerry Jones does is he sells you hope. And there's an old saying that fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And this is where we all buy in. And we sit here and we... Even me, me and all the rest of us YouTubers out here, we all make the shit shine. We all sell the dream and the bullshit that Jerry Jones does. Because here's the thing that'll happen. I, I know what's going to happen. People are going to say, oh my God, we should have went out and got Kirk Cousins, man. Kirk Cousins is, is incredible. The thing that people don't want to understand and grasp the hook to when you have the 32nd ranked rushing team, it makes you one-dimensional. When you can't effectively run the football, then that means play action doesn't work, which is where you're faking the run and they're worried about stopping the run for it being a big, big game. And they may have to put seven or eight men in the box. That's in the middle to crowd the middle of the field to stop the run, which gives you more space with the wide receivers. And I'm going to ask you this. When Kurt Cousins threw a pass, and I can't remember to who it was, it might have been, uh, was it Moody? And he was literally by his damn self. There was almost nobody else in the pitcher. The ball hit him in the chest, and it bounced out and dropped it. And people thought, oh, okay, that's it. The, the, the Falcons lost on that play. Let me ask you, when have you seen a Dallas Cowboy wide receiver wide open? This year. When? When? I can't say I've seen anybody. The Dallas Cowboys are in the high 20s when it comes to separation. And that's mainly because you have younger guys that don't have the experience in the route running you know, capability down just yet. And you have CeeDee Lamb. And you have, uh, you have uh, Jake Ferguson, who's recovering from the MCL. Because you don't have a multitude of weapons, it's easier to defend C.D. Lamb. You're not worried about Zeke. You're not worried about Rico. You're not worried about Jalen Brooks or Jalen Tolbert or um, Brandon Cooks, who clearly there's been something wrong with him through training camp and into now, which is why he had a procedure. Here's the thing. Kirk Cousins has B. John Robinson, who's been incredible. He only had 12 carries last night, but for 61 yards, averaging 5.1 yards a carry. And if you don't think that Tampa Bay was worried about him going off, then you don't understand football. But passing the football around, this is where, if you know Dak Prescott's numbers and things, when Dak Prescott hits six or more players, receivers, generally speaking, the Cowboys always win. Drake London, 12 catches. Daryl Mooney, nine catches, 105 yards. Drake London had 154. Kyle Pitts, seven catches, 88 yards. Um, Ray Ray McLeod, six catches, 66 yards. Even though Kirk Cousins had a lot of yards, it was balanced. It wasn't just one guy to stop. This is the thing. Drake London, you know, it's like C.D. Lamb. He was incredible. But Drake London isn't as incredible if Daryl Mooney isn't also getting nine catches for 105 yards. Now I got to worry about both of these guys. And then I get a Kyle Pitts who is, you know, a drive, uh, keeping drives going with seven. There's too many people to cover. And I ask you, do we have that with the Dallas Cowboys? No, we don't. No, we don't. And even, even more balanced. 
with Baker Mayfield. People say, we should have got Baker Mayfield. Man, Baker Mayfield, man, he's better than Dak Prescott. Well, here's the thing that Baker Mayfield had going for him yesterday. He only threw 180 yards passing, three TDs. He had an incredible game. But here's the thing. He had Rasheed White, rushed for 10 carries for 72 yards, 7.2 yards a carry. He had Bucky Irvin, rushed for 9 carries, 44 yards, 4.9 yards a carry. And even Baker Mayfield, 6 carries, 42 yards. When you can amass 150 yards on the ground, you don't need to throw for 400 yards to win games. And these are things that the Dallas Cowboys don't have. You know, we sit here and we talk about, oh, well, again, and I get it. Devontae Adams is the number one receiver and he's going to be really pricey and stuff. But you have to look at it and say, we still have to have more weapons than what we have. Be it a better running back. And this is where things just don't make sense. The trade deadline is a month and a day away. A month and a day away. That's if you're going to make a big move to try and save your season or try and set up a run, you have one month and one day to decide that. I would think that you would want to know, is Dalvin Cook a piece that we can use that will help us get there? Or is he a piece that we need to replace? This is the maddening thing about the Dallas Cowboys that you sit here and it's like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Because I don't know what they're doing. It seems like they're not doing much of anything. Now, they've got the fall guy in Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb. You got that. And anybody who thinks that you're going to win a Super Bowl with one wide receiver and one quarterback and that's it, then you don't understand football. And you can sit here and blame Dak Prescott and say Dak is garbage, Dak is this, that, and the other. The fact that the Cowboys win with this formula that nobody else follows, we're going to win through the draft only is kidding themselves. Jerry Jones has lied to you. It's not about winning the Super Bowls. It's all bullshit. It's about him making more freaking money. And that's where it gets to be crazy for me. And the thing is, whether you want to believe it or not, the Cowboys shouldn't have won as many games as they have over the last three years. They shouldn't have. Those players on the field are overcoming for the GM that's too cheap to give them help. And that's the reality of the Dallas Cowboys. So yes, you're seeing the Atlanta Falcons making moves to get better. You're seeing, you know, Tampa Bay making moves to get better. You're seeing Teams right now scrambling because now DeAndre Hopkins may be a trade target. That he's maybe out there. Amari Cooper, you know, uh, Devontae Adams. Because now it's buy or sell. If you think your team sucks, you're, you're selling the pieces off so you can build for next year. If you think your team is good, you're buying. And the Cowboys, well, we're stuck in the middle where we're not selling and we're not buying. In which case, we'll stay stuck in the middle. And that's the part that drives you crazy. Now, our defense, they're hurting. They're hurting. We had Diggs hurt his ankle yesterday. It seems to be that he'll be okay. Um, Micah Parsons is not going to probably play this week, maybe not next week. We know D-Law is going to be gone maybe two months. And we are relying solely on bottom-tier free agents and – um, young guys to put a defense on here, which means what we're going to need to do on the offense is we're going to need to help protect them by holding on to the ball longer, by scoring more points, something a running attack would help you with. But yet, we don't have that yet. So it's doom and gloom for the Dallas Cowboys for this game. And in fact, let's go to ESPN and get their take on it basically they're saying the cowboys got no chance in hell
consider them as contenders in that division. All right, and then Harold, I'll come to you. What if Justin Fields outplays Dak Prescott this weekend? Well, Greedy, that means that the defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers and T.J. Watt has had a day. I'm talking about two or three sacks potentially from T.J. Watt and probably five total as a team for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's what that means to me. So this is a really interesting game. It's the Sunday night game. It's the mm-hmm. Cowboys at the Steelers. Mm-hmm. And we've talked a lot about Dallas this week. And, in fact, it is no secret that I have a fork with me this morning. <laughs> uh, and, and someone might get a fork stuck in them today. We might just have to consider the Cowboys here. They're, 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 you, are you, Cowboys are done, man. You're sticking Already a fork done? in the Cowboys? No. It's October 3rd. Okay, one, I didn't expect them to be a playoff team coming into this season. Okay. Did, it's correct you, you said that. that. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. two, they're – Two of their four best players are hurt, and it seems like they're going to be out for a significant period of time. Marcus Lawrence for sure. Lawrence. Marcus yeah. Lawrence, I can make the claim, is the heartbeat of their defense. Watch that guy play. Mm-hmm. They're going to be without Brandon Cooks for probably a couple games. Name their number two and number three receiver. Uh, the two Jalens. Jalen yeah. Tolbert. And, Tolbert and, 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 the, uh, and Brooks, the, and then they got Kevon And the tight end. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, and they've got Marcus Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, <laughs> Can I it's going, you may not be making the point you think you're <laughs> Let's making. Let's ask this. Uh, on Sunday night when they play the Steelers, where do the Cowboys have an advantage? Uh, Quarterback? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That may be it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's reasonably it. No, no. Maybe so the bottom somebody. line, what oh. we're trying to say, what we're trying to say is the Cowboys were a team that during the course of this offseason got worse albeit more expensive, but still worse. And other teams have elevated. So, yeah. what you've, I mean, we can have as much fun as we want with the fork. They're in real trouble, oh. right? Because after this Steeler game, their schedule it's, doesn't get any easier. Where do you see – I think if you look at their next seven or eight games, like where are you honestly seeing wins, like clear wins? If you say three – even the game after that, there, it's, it's, it's – it's, Nowhere. So, that's no. the thing. Like, you can, yeah. three games saying they get three wins over the next seven or eight is actually being kind. But I look at this and I, I feel like – we're putting too much. We're acting as if every the Steelers just lost to the Indianapolis Colts. Oh, yes. We just said the Eagles. We have potential of sticking a fork in them as well. The Atlanta Falcons play tough against the Kansas City Chiefs. They just be like they're making some moves, but we're talking about every team on this list as if they are all contenders to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. We're talking about the NFC East. They are. But I'm just saying, they're not teams that have gone through their schedules to just dominate a team. The Lions looked really ugly against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So there's moments in these games where I feel like we can't stick a fork in them yet because who's the lead in that division? Here's the that? point. That's exactly what we're building up to here, and that is this. I said in the open of the show, the Cowboys have one chance, and their chance is that the division doesn't run away from yeah. them, that the Eagles actually do implode. That the commanders, whose defense outside of this past week didn't look good, that that defense really is bad, and that Jaden Daniels starts to look something like a rookie again, and that that division can be won at nine and eight. Mm -hmm. If the if the division can be won at nine and eight, that's the Cowboys' chance. If if you have to get to Mm eleven wins, I completely agree with you. The Cowboys have close to no chance of doing that. If the Cowboys get to nine and eight and win the division, it still doesn't matter. They're going to get boat raced in the playoffs. I'm not going to argue that. Here's the list about the teams that they're about to play, though. Go. There's a common denominator. A lot of those teams like to run, run the, the ball. Football. Run the rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Cowboys' Achilles heel on defense mm-hmm. is that they cannot yeah. stop the run. With with Two Micah Parsons yes. and DeMarcus yeah, exactly. Lawrence. And then they do not run the football, so it makes them one-dimensional, so it makes it easier to defend them, in my opinion. And that's the perfect way to set up what you have for us next year. So show us what Justin Fields can and should do to attack this defense. Yeah, that's the key of the game. Can they handle him in structure, like some of the mm-hmm. bootlegs that they're going to throw at him? They're really trying to get Justin Fields in Pittsburgh out on the perimeter but also in the structure of a pass concept. Those are dump-offs to the tight ends. That, that's seven, eight yards to Pat Fryer move. And it's only really to his right that they're trying to get successful with this. This one's a dump-off to Darnell Washington. He's going to go for 20. So that's the in-structure stuff. Then the outer structure stuff. If they rush past or behind Justin Fields, it is over. Those are three guys last week that get behind Justin Fields, and then all he does is go create big plays. A couple to Pat Fryermuth, a couple to George Pickens. For Dallas Cowboys defense, if you go back to last time we watched them play in a athletic quarterback situation, Lamar Jackson, he killed them with this. There's it again. Behind Can't the quarterback, you cannot do that. And without Micah, without Demarcus, I got a bad feeling that they're going to try and do that without the discipline. And then the reality is this: their strategic quarterback runs, and Lamar killed them 
with this. It's a huge challenge for their defense. I agree with Jason. I understand your point about the, anybody can win on Sundays, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Cowboys, not only are they depleted on defense, where are the reinforcements coming on offense? Because they've got to rely on the young kids, a lot of experience. Maybe they're able to rise to the occasion, sure, but there are no guarantees here, and it's not like they're going to go out and get Devontae Adams. For sure. they're they got the cap space, but they're trying to allocate that money for future deals down the line. So you're looking at this team, a lot of question marks. And we have a lot of answers on our screen. There's not one but person here. But maybe that's here. the jinx. Maybe. Well, maybe that's the jinx. Can... <laughs> Look, my, my usual uh, modus operandi is that if everyone is going one way, I go the other. Yeah. But I can't do it here. I mean, I, I can't see how Dallas wins this game. I still can't believe Pittsburgh lost that game last week. I never thought I'd say this. Pick and They're, fumble in the red zone. Well, I'm yeah, saying, their great. defense let Justin Fields down yeah. also. Yeah. Yes. And the fact that it's in Pittsburgh, that to me is a big deal. Uh, how did they block T.J. Watt? I know everyone's going to go, well, they did it to Miles Garrett.